Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is fe February 29th, happy leap day. Uh, and around the table, we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Varashton joining us today. Uh, for the agenda, so uh, just check in on the LTS release last week, this week's weekly release, the Contributor Summit FOSDEM recap blog post, uh, some, some notes on Google Summer of Code, uh, the Jenkins Community Awards are uh, voting periods now open. So notes on that. Uh, housekeeping for Docs Office Hours Asia. And then uh, the JIRA upgrade for issues.jenkins.io, something that's coming up that we've noted last week. Uh, some discussion on the version documentation site. The tutorial revamps to use Docker Compose and the sponsor attribution page. Uh, anything else that uh, you want to make sure we put on the agenda for today, Bruno, or does that cover all your topics? Exactly. Uh, nothing more from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ah, so starting off, so again, happy leap day, February 29th, only happens once every four years. So that's fun. We get to meet today. Uh, last week, we had LT the new baseline LTS release, so 2.440.1. Uh, so everything went well there. There were no issues with the release itself. Uh, the upgrade guy did have some content that caused some issues with the Jenkins.io build, um, but we Damien was able to uh, resolve that, take care of all that, address that accordingly. So now, so everything went through. And going forward, the upgrade guide is going to have screenshots in the PR as well as the upgrade, uh, as well as the change log. So uh, there was some code in there from the remoting update that uh, ended up causing some issues. So. Um, it happens. No worries. We were able to, like, like I said, we were able to fix it uh, and then um, get everything going and have rendered and published properly. So everything is good to go there. Welcome to Chris Stern. Thanks for joining. Uh, and then, uh, so this week we had the weekly 2.447 release. That went well. Everything went through there and everything, uh, yeah, the release went smoothly. Change logs been published. Everything is good to go there. Uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, we were able to put together and publish the Jenkins Contributor Summit and FOSDEM recap. Um, so thanks to everyone who joined, participated, attended FOSDEM, the Contributor Summit, et cetera, everything in general that weekend. Um, what a great turnout. And uh, yeah, we're just happy to be able to share some of these um, some of the experience with everyone, the memories, uh, and some of the photos from the event as well. So uh, this was finally published yesterday. We had a, uh, there was an issue where I had, uh, I thought I had updated the file path for the images to coincide with the release, the publication date. There was an issue. So we had some broken images for a bit there, but uh, thanks to J Tim Jacob for uh, approving my pull request. We were able to get that resolved. And so now the uh, blog post appears properly. Um, in the blog post, I just wanted to call these things out. Uh, so one is we did include the Contributor Summit presentation slide deck. So if you wanted to view it, you have that option to do so here. Um, and that way you can follow along with the blog post itself. It was uh, oriented in a way that matches the presentation slide deck so that uh, it should come uh, follow suit. Um, and just a really, really huge thank you to Beta Cowork for providing the space for the Contributor Summit. Um, Jean-Marc Missen uh, went and was able to collaborate with them, partner up with them, um, get a room for the Contributor Summit and just uh, make it possible in the first place. So huge thanks to Beta Cowork for that um, and Jean-Marc for organizing it. Uh, and John Mark has gone and uh, followed up with them as well for next year, which is great. Um, John Mark may, uh, may not be part of uh, Cloud Bees as a, as a you know, that organization, but uh, he'll be part of Jenkins still going forward. Um, John Mark's retiring this summer. So uh, we'll miss him around in different parts, but uh, he'll still be active in the community at different points. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the contributor summit was great. Just really still riding that high for a lot of us, I think. Um, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, just really fun experience. And so now everyone can take a look and see what that uh, might've looked like for us. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the Google Summer of Code. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've had Jenkins online meetups to go over the project ideas in uh, more detail. Um, so I think the first week, the first five were discussed and then the second week, the rest of them were uh, overviewed. Um, Bruno, Chris, uh, any notes, insights you'd like to share on Google Summer of Code and where we're at or uh, what kind of has been going on the last couple of weeks? Chris, go ahead if you don't mind. Oh, 
uh, I have a correction to make. Uh, we now have nine portrait ideas instead of 11, because like we have to focus on the ones that will mostly be more successful than the others. Yeah, no, that makes total sense, Chris. Thanks for clarifying that, appreciate it. Um, and obviously yeah. with the Google Summer of Code, we wanna invite new contributors to join projects, um, but we also wanna make sure that the work being done is useful uh, and relative to the project itself. And so uh, by focusing on these better quality, higher chance of success projects, um, that's gonna create a better environment for the contributors, the mentors, the org admins, everyone involved. And it's a lot more likely that the projects will uh, finish and finish successfully, which is really the you know what we want most out of this is uh, to not only give that experience to everyone involved, but um, the work that's being done have it have it be incorporated into the project itself. So um, great there. Lots of Gitter activity has been going on. Lots of chatting. Lots of responding. Lots of uh, welcoming people into the organization. Um, I know we had a couple of new mentors add their profiles to the project. So that's really exciting as well. Um, yeah, we have, and we, have, um, we have two uh, two contributors from last year returning as mentors this year. That's fantastic. And then uh, Chris, do you know who they are off the top of your head? Yeah, one is, um, I think he's, I don't remember the full name, but his name is Harsh. One is Harsh. The other yes, one's Harsh. Vin... Yeah. And then did sing. Oh, they're both his sings. Yeah. So Harsh sing and then did sing. Oh, neat. Wonder... Yeah. Great. And that's good. I'm glad to see Vandy back. Um, I know you guys have been working on, you, you've both been working on the uh, version documentation stuff for Jenkins and uh, yeah. Vandy. It's been a great contributor. So yep. really nice to see uh, both him and Harsh back. Fantastic. Yep. Great. So uh, lots of stuff there. Oh, um, I skimmed over this. So Jenkins has been accepted as an official Google Summer of Code organization. Uh, Alyssa and Jean-Marc put together a blog post announcing it. Um, and we also have on the Jenkins site itself an update to the carousel. Uh, so we now have uh, the Google Summer of Code 2024 here as well. So uh, communications have been sent out, lots of uh, good information in the blog post as well. Uh, key timeline, key information for contributors, um, lots of just really, really important information here. Uh, and also links to the call for mentors blog post, a couple other items that are crucial for any potential contributors or participants. Great, thank you so much, Chris, appreciate it. Uh, next up, the Jenkins Community Awards. So uh, this has been, we announced this a little while back. Uh, Alyssa wrote a blog post for it at the end of January. Um, we have three Jenkins Project Awards. So the Most Valuable Contributor, Advocate, uh, and the Security MVP. Uh, so last week before the, or during office hours, I had mentioned that uh, there's a voting process involving the reactions to each nomination. Uh, however, that's since been changed. Uh, we actually have a dedicated vo voting form for the Jenkins Awards. So that is linked in the blog post. It's also linked here in the, the uh, agenda, um, but this is where you would actually want to go and vote for the Jenkins Awards. Um, you can only vote once, but uh, everything will be tallied at on uh, March 22nd or after March 22nd when the voting period ends and then winners announced in CDCon 2024 uh, as they were last year. So, um, We've got a handful of nominees for each of them. Uh, Security MVP, there's only a couple nominees, but they're very high quality nominees. So I uh, can't go wrong there. Uh, most valuable Jenkins advocate and contributor. Again, all very high quality uh, nominees and candidates. There's no wrong answer here whatsoever. Uh, and so the voting period opened on the 22nd of February and goes until the 22nd of March. Um, there's also a voting form for the non Jenkins awards. Uh, I only bring this up as much as it pains me to say, uh, because I've been nominated for the documentation award. So um, if you want to vote for me, you can. Uh, I, this is this feels awkward. So I'm just going to stop advocating there. But um, yeah, so the community awards really important. We want to we want to show people that uh, what they do really makes a difference and what a great way to do it. 
Uh, next documentation, office hours for Asia specifically. So um, last week's was canceled. This week's uh, is going to be canceled. And then next week's will be canceled as well. Mark is currently away uh, and not able to host. So uh, for the next, uh, well, next week as well, uh, I'll be here for all your documentation needs. And then uh, I will be gone for a couple of weeks after that. Mark will host the uh, EU US office hours as well. So um, don't, no interruption on the uh, EU US office hours going for the next month. Uh, something that we wanna note and make sure everyone's aware of is that for uh, March 12th, uh, there's gonna be a JIRA upgrade for issues.jenkins.io. The service will be unavailable for a period of time. However, we're hoping that's a minimal period of time. Uh, you can see here the idea is it's only a couple of hours. So. Uh, if everything goes well and there's no uh, issues or hiccups, that should be the case. And there will be further updates. You can subscribe to updates if you want to get be updated constantly uh, right when there are updates for this. Uh, but yeah, just something to note, something to be aware of, uh, that there will be a couple hours of downtime for issues.jenkins.io. And then next up on the agenda, so the version documentation for Jenkins.io. Um, again, just to recap, this is the result of a Google Summer of Code 2023 project of looking to build Jenkins.io with an alternative build tool. Uh, it's been decided that we're going to be using a combination of Antora and Gatsby. And so uh, Chris Stern, Vandit Singh, uh, others, myself, we've all been working on this in different ways. Chris and Vandit have been doing the uh, bulk of the work. I've been helping to review things now that it's at uh, a point to do so. Uh, and everything looks really nice there. Um, the, the transition from one to the other has been really nice. We're not ready to push it uh, into the infrastructure fully yet because of Azure cost saving measures that we're looking at. Um, but once we have a confirmation that that's a bit more under control, this will be coming right back to the forefront of what we're looking to do next. Um, we, uh, Chris uh, and I were also able to meet with Daniel Beck last week from the Jenkins security team to go over uh, some concerns that they had or things that they want to make sure of in regards to security advisories. Um, everything went really well with that. I think Chris was able to give a lot of reassurance to Daniel Beck and make sure that they understand why these are why these changes are coming and why they're a good thing. Um, stuff like uh, making sure that their frameworks kind of still work for the most part, um, reassuring them that there's not going to be an increase in time between pushing commits and having them be published, which is, uh, I think we actually went the other way on that. It's going to take less time, which is really fantastic news and uh, really definitely put a smile on Daniel's face, even if we didn't see it. Uh, and then Daniel also had created a pull request to um, inquire about individual pages being generated for uh, the changelog entries. So uh, ideally, what would it be is instead of having an anchor link that goes directly to uh, the full change log, but you know, singling out the section that you're looking for, uh, it would instead create a separate page for each change log uh, or versions change log. So there would just be for the 2.426.3, for instance, it would just be those entries on the page. It wouldn't be the full list of change log entries so that could cut down on time in just terms of rendering and, and displaying the page um, that removes unnecessary information that the person may not be looking for um, if they're looking for a specific version change log we can give that to them directly um, and that's a really nice idea i think as long as it's not um, adding to any kind of cost or any on the back end stuff that i'm not fully aware of it sounds like a great idea um, and mark was actually able to review and comment as well, saying as much. So um, it does seem like it's a good idea and everyone's on board with that. So it's just more a matter of implementation and whether or not that's possible or what that might look like. So yeah, more to come with that. It's right now, it's just a draft. So nothing's gonna be changing or happening immediately, but something to look forward to at some point in the future. Uh, next up, so we've been talking about the Maven and Python tutorials getting revamped to use Docker Compose, and now we can uh, factually include the Node.js tutorial in that as well. It has been revamped, it has been merged, uh, and now we're using Docker Compose in all three tutorials, which is fantastic. Um, thanks to Bruno uh, and uh, Harsh for their work on this and getting this um, across the finish line from Google Summer of Code 2023 as well. 
Um, and Bruno was actually able to confirm last week or the week prior uh, that the Maven tutorials have actually helped the user get started. So that's yep. really fantastic news. The Docker Compose instructions are being proven to work and confirming that we made the right choice here. Uh, <laughs> Bruno, any other insights, notes, comments on that stuff? Uh, not really, except thank you uh, for the detailed reviews. Um, and yes, I'm working on the multi-branch pipeline next. There are a few more changes that for the previous um, tutorials because it doesn't work as is, even in its current form. There are some errors here and there. So I will maybe have to make a few changes. And even in the sample itself, you know, we are basing our tutorial on another repo with um, uh, React um, code. And it's not working as is for the time being because things have changed. We have to update some dependencies and so on. But that will be okay. I hope that next week I will be able to have a draft PR with the working tutorial, at least on my machine. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll see. Uh, I'm not really fluent with uh, React so and Node and all those JavaScript stuff. So I hope it will work for other people too. Great. Thank you very much. And I know um, I know Alex Brandis has also been reviewing and approving a lot of these mm -hmm. too, which has been great. Um, having Alex's knowledge on that is really helpful because uh, I know the documentation side of things and I can test, but uh, yeah, having multiple people with different backgrounds and skill sets looking at these things really helps make sure that we're, uh, it's a complete, you know, uh, complete revamp if we're if that's what we're going for that everything is done cor accordingly so um, yeah really fantastic great to see i'm sure i'll keep an eye out for that bruno and uh yeah hopefully it's just as easy yeah thank you Kevin. and then um eventually down the line sooner than later uh the goal is that we incorporate the docker compose instructions into the installation documentation and, and make sure that um we're simplifying things as much as possible. Right now, the Docker and Docker is a lot more complicated and not nearly as secure. So the Docker Compose actually resolves those issues and those concerns. So just makes sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then the last thing on the agenda that I have for today is the sponsor attributions page that we've been discussing. Um, it's, it hasn't had any further development done uh, this week or anything since our last session. Um, but uh, now that Basil's uh, returned and able to start working on this again, there will be some movement in there eventually. Uh, but the idea is that JFrog asked about being credited as a sponsor for Jenkins, which, yeah, they deserve that. They are. That makes sense. Uh, but we want to make sure that they're getting the correct sponsorship attribution. Um, we have sponsors of varying levels, different um, amounts of donations in terms of like services versus monetary versus credits or something. There's a lot of different levels and aspects to the, the sponsorship that we have. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence when we go to make this page. Basil Crow's created a draft uh, of this page and uh, the way it works is it's set up in a few, handful of different levels going from Anchor, which would be like the cr most crucial sponsors of Jenkins to Mirrors where um, there are sponsors of Jenkins that are simply providing mirrors. And that's great. We need those mirrors, um, but it's a different kind of donation or sponsorship than say, you know, what the Anchor would be in this case or Gold where it's something like AWS or CloudBees where they're donating significant uh, credits or services or support in any way, shape or form to Jenkins. So um, we have that information though, which is really great. Um, so Basil can start looking through that and working with the rest of the governance board to determine what that might look like, what the sponsor attribution should be uh, and how that's gonna kind of shake out on the page itself. Um, some recent donations that, we've, that we wanna call out especially and thank uh, AWS has donated 60,000 credits to Jenkins. That's amazing. Um, thanks to AWS for their continued support. DigitalOcean has donated in 2023 and 2024. Um, more to come on that, but their donations are always hugely impactful. Uh, Microsoft's donated to Jenkins, which is great to see. Uh, and Ampere, uh, Ampere has recently donated to ARM64 servers. Right now they're at Mark Waite's house because that's where we have to store them. Um, but 
it's um this is the first time sponsorship with Ampere. This has been in the works for about a year or so. Um, thanks to Bruno and Mark for facilitating the sponsorship and the partnership. Um, I think, uh, I forget what the gentleman's name is, but... Um, Aaron Williams. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, one more time, Bruno. Sorry, I missed the first. Aaron Williams and Dave Neary. Okay. Again, so I'm pair I am in contact with. Cool. Perfect. So yeah. So, um, and then was Aaron the person at Fostum? Was yes, indeed. Dave? Okay, so yeah, so uh, Aaron was at Fostum and had a very long conversation on Sunday with uh, Bruno and Mark, mostly Mark, about the servers and yes. just Jenkins in general. So um, just thank you very, very much to Aaron and Dave and Ampere for their sponsorship, for their collaboration, for just everything up to this point with this. Um, really great to be part of the team and uh, or yeah, just be involved, be collaborating with these folks. So. Yeah, everything is going pretty well. Everything's looking good. Jenkins is really healthy right now. We're seeing a lot of growth and a lot of contributions coming through. Google Summer Code 2024 is on the horizon uh, and lots of other great stuff is coming. So uh, I think it's gonna be a great year for Jenkins overall. And on that note, we've reached the end of the agenda. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up the meeting. Recording will be available in about 24 to 48 hours, maybe sooner, depending on when I get that posted. Um, but yeah, um, we'll see you next week. Take care, stay safe. Thank you as always for joining and contributing. Uh, and if you have questions, definitely reach out in the docs Gitter channel or on community.jenkins.io if you have other topics you'd like to discuss. Uh, until then, take care. We'll see you next week and have a good rest of your day. Bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.